Hey, this is Royce Hall with the Wealth Science Podcast. Today we have Michael Beswick, who is the Director of Consulting Services at CRM Science, uh, also known as Bez. Good to have you, buddy. I'm nice to be here. Awesome. Well, today, you know, we brought you in as our special guest to talk about uh, the Salesforce ecosystem around wealth science. So, you know, this looks like financial services, fintech, you know, how we interact with those products. We're going to talk about the benefit of those different products and uh, kind of how we fit in with that ecosystem. So very excited to talk to you about that today. I really appreciate you joining us. I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited to talk about it too. So the, the first thing I kind of want to dive into with you and get kind of your expert perspective on here is we talk about FinServe and we talk about FinTech or people just say Fins all together. And those things can kind of be, be uh, used interchangeably, but that's not really, it's not really the case, right? You know, there's a difference between FinServe and FinTech. Can you just walk me through that a little bit? Sure. So um, in the most modern way, there's a lot of overlap between FinServe and FinTech, but that's sort of just the, um, the outcome of what FinTech is. So FinServe, you can think of as your traditional banking resources. So wealth management, um, insurance, advisors, brokerages, uh, the institutions that make up the financial services community that um, you know serve us all, serve businesses, serve uh, countries even. Um, FinTech is a much younger uh, offshoot of that. And it's traditionally around disruptive startups that are coming in to help with like, you know, helping to bank the unbanked. So places like Ally and those online banks um, so that you don't have to go to traditional branches, things like that. Um, but when it comes down to the core, FinServe is the services that are being offered while FinTech is technology and products that support those services being um, more accessible or more technologically advanced to make the process quicker. Um, a good example of that is FinServe would be your traditional financial advisor, whereas FinTech would be the idea of robo-advisors. Or it would be brokerages like um, Fidelity or Citadel versus the ability to download an app like Robinhood and immediately start getting into investment. So those more traditionals are the FinServe. Those are the services that they can provide. The tech is what supports those services and access to services that would usually not be able to, um, people would usually not get in the traditional manners. I think it's really interesting that, you know, with that in the Salesforce ecosystem, it's kind of it's fun. You get a you get to work with both sides, right? Like we we work with fintechs and we also work with financial services institutions. And uh, you know, I think probably a lot of people that are listening to this, you know, they're familiar with the the differentiation between those those two things, right? Like that's not that's not necessarily new information. But uh, what I think about is there's multiple different products in Salesforce and there's a financial services cloud. So like, what's the difference between just like Salesforce and FinServe cloud? And then like, if you're a, a wealth manager, like what do you use? Like, you know, what's the difference? What do you gain for each of those things? How do you make the right choice of product with Salesforce? Right, so again, Salesforce has a plethora of products available. Um, traditional Salesforce, let's just say a regular sales implementation of Salesforce, Sales Cloud, um, that will get you your lead generation opportunities, tracking deals, things like that. Um, and that can be used for financial services. An advisor could use that just to get new people on. They could build out some customization to get their account onboarding in there and all of that. Um, and they can build all that. It's just going to be the amount of time in building that versus using something like the financial services cloud package that comes with Salesforce, where that's all pre-built for you. So you can use um, you can use Salesforce and it's in its native way, sales service cloud, to do a lot of things. It's just going to require a lot of customization. Um, and there's all kinds of apps that you can get to pull in. Um, and then you can use financial services cloud as a way to 
give you an architecture and automated features that are very specific to the those industries. So lending, wealth management, um, mortgage, uh, banking in general, insurance, those industries. There's already architecture to, so that's architecture that supports, um, you know, keeping a household together, knowing what the accounts are like, what are the assets, things like that. Uh, life events so you can track along a person's life, knowing when their kids' birthdays are, knowing when they get their bonuses per year so that an advisor can reach out and see if they want to invest in certain things at that time. Um, all of those are, are additional features to the financial services cloud, whereas vanilla Salesforce, which would be the sales or service, you would have to build all of those processes in and the technology to support those processes. Um, so financial services cloud gives you like an 80% head start toward uh, an org that is shaped specifically for financial services businesses. Um, when to use which? That's a good question. So you have to make the decision of what you're trying to get. So as I said, if you're a wealth manager, you 100% don't need to have financial services cloud. It just gets you where you want to go faster. So there are plenty, plenty of financial services businesses that may not need all of those um, customer touch points that FSC provides. So it may be a business where all you're doing is you know, all you're doing is getting people in and then sending them off to the to an advisor who will do all the openings of the accounts and everything like that. In that at that case, you may be fine with just Sales Cloud where you're bringing leads in, getting the opportunities, and then sending it off to your partners who have other software that will help them with opening opening accounts and all of that and keeping track of those accounts. That may be a case where you don't need FSC. If you are doing the account opening and managing the money yourself, that's a case where FSC will get you to where you need to be a whole lot quicker than trying to build it off from scratch yourself. Um, if you are a mortgage lender, you can have people come in and you can go through the, the lead process and then send them off to another place to get originated, or you can put FSC into the mix and you can still get people coming in, but then within Salesforce, you can do that origination and all the steps that it takes in that process um, much quicker than trying to build it all by yourself or farming it out to another system. Let, let me ask you kind of a, a piggyback question uh, to when do you use what? Let me ask you a question that's uh, uh, maybe gonna get us both in trouble, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so in the Salesforce world, you know, there, you, you talked about, you know, the Salesforce kind of, uh, you know, standard package, right? You got your sales, your service, et cetera. Then you've got FSC, Financial Services Cloud. Then there's a world of like, we call them OEM packages, where people have basically uh, repackaged uh, Salesforce uh, for a particular use case. So this isn't Salesforce repackaging itself as FSC. This is uh, a third party company coming in and saying, okay, we, we're prepackaging Salesforce and selling it under X name. I'm not going to use those names because there's there's a ton of them out there, and I, I'm not trying to uh, start any fights here, right? But um, why would somebody use one of those OEMs, and then why would somebody not use one of those OEMs and use FSC instead? So that's a good question, and there are a lot of OEMs that do do this, and some of them predate Salesforce's implementation of FSC. Um, and some of them have a lot of overlap. So you'll find yourself out in the world of Salesforce uh, situations where people are plain vanilla, people are using that OEM, people are using the OEM with a mix of FSC, um, or people are just using the OEM just completely by themselves. Um, and you find that based on very specific needs. So it's hard to say without going into the names of them, but they're... There are a few that I can think of. There are, there's very specifically a mortgage one, and that provides you most of the things that you need for originating, originating a loan, right? It gives you the structure of bringing in a new lead, converting them into an account, um, getting them into the um, application process, having that go out for underwriting, and having information come back in from, um, from another system 
that says you know they can borrow up to 800k or 600k or whatever based on based on their metrics um so that does get you there that app happens to predate fsc and now people can do that on fsc 90 percent, right so they can get everywhere up to that submission at which point the uh at which point fannie mae freddie mac they have a, they we have the ability to integrate with them to do that submission and bring it back making that oem not really useful now that's just for that one particular instance of origination there's other instances where you may have a ton of business processes that need to be put in there. Maybe you prefer the way that another company has those business processes set out. So that's laid out in their package and you can follow through very quickly um, to you know, meet up with that account. Let's call it the account opening process, right? So you get the request, the money comes in, you've got to go, um, it's got to go out to Fidelity or whomever is going to be the, uh, the custodian and it has to be updated and come back. Um, there's packages out there that have a lot of that already written in and you can piggyback on that and if that's more profitable if you have that one use case that's just perfect for that package it may be better to use that package if you have a wider use case where you're running the whole business um off of fsc that's something that we would have to build in that that custodian piece um, but we can get you all the pieces up there and afterwards pretty much with a straight out of the box at least the the features that are straight up out of the box for financial services with a minimal amount of customization so you talked about a couple different use cases there it it sounds to me like what what you're saying uh kind of in a in, in a different way is with those oems they're typically pointed out a very specific use case mm -hmm. and uh you can buy that and get the functionality sometimes less for them you know less than you would buy you know, Salesforce for, right? oh, yeah. but the benefit of FSC is, you know, instead of being, you know, very narrow on this one thing, it has a much broader suite of, 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 uh, tools. So when you build an OEM, you know, a lot of times as you limit the objects and the functionality you can have access to, right? Well, that's, well, the, that's thing. the thing you're going to have. have most of the OEMs, what you get is you wind up with uh, platform licenses, which is basically the most minimum license that Salesforce will provide. That allows you essentially access to the app that they built. So you don't get the standard, you don't get access to Salesforce functionality to customize things. You don't get access to writing dozens of flows to help you, writing classes to help you, things like that. Um, that doesn't generally come along in that type of instance now the person providing it they can write extra code that can help that will go along with with their stuff whereas when you own it it's your platform so we're talking about sort of specific features and functionality but we need to remember that salesforce as itself is like a lego base we can build almost anything in salesforce using different pieces but we have to have the access to do that so we may get, you know, FSC gives us a whole bunch of these red colored blocks, whereas the OEM gives us this many blue colored blocks. On the OEM, you can't go and change any of those blocks ever. On FSC, not only will it give you all these blue blocks that we're getting toward, you can build a little bit of customization, a little bit of customization, a little bit of customization, and then bring more pieces of the business in so that that can inform more of the, uh, you know, whatever cycle you're trying to do, whether it be upselling your clients, um, rev revenue generation, um, as much information as you can get in to inform those activities, you can do. And using FSC and building it yourself gives you that ability to have um, that scalability to bring all the information as, as much as possible to then make decisions on later on. Awesome, well, thanks for guiding us through that kind of high level overview of Salesforce, FSC, and uh, when to use what, I appreciate it, Buzz. Mm -hmm.